So Hilton, you were kind enough to bring in some of your session files. We've got one open right here. And uh, let's check out how you're using A-List Guitarist and okay. maybe share some of your tips actually in the session file. Okay. Yeah, so with this particular file, I was working with an independent artist who commissioned me to do a track that had an old school funk type of feel. And, you know, they wanted live instrumentation and, you know, all of those elements that really make up that feel good funk groove. Mm -hmm. And so this is what I came up with. And uh, the reason I thought this would be it would be good to show is because I used a lot of propeller head refills, rack extensions, factory sound bank. And there were a couple third party refills I used, like Miro Slav for strings and some horns. Nice. And I want to say maybe a couple other uh, third party refills for like some percussion loops, maybe. But just walking through it, uh, I guess we'll give it a listen first for a little bit. Yeah. That's pretty much that. And there, there's also a song that I wrote to it. I, I'd spare my demo vocals though for the for the viewers out there. Like I said, there was plenty of Neptune on it. So we're still in the process of recording. The artist is still recording the right. song. And I also recorded it in Reason and, and mixing it in Reason. The first thing that strikes me about this production is, is the the guitars and the horns and everything sounds so wonderfully organic. Yeah, um, yeah. But all these sounds came from Reason and they came from uh, refills and the right. factory sound bank and everything. Right. You know, it's a puzzle just piecing together certain Rex loops and mixing that with playing some different uh, string and horn parts for stuff that, you know, I might not, I might have missed. Maybe, you know, taking a certain slice out of a Rex file. But it's really fun, you know, just piecing it all together. Yeah. So walk us through it. Tell us how okay. you put it together. Cool. Well, yeah, I'll give a quick overview um, of the rack and just kind of show you how vast uh, that is. Uh, I'm using one, two, three, four, five different racks. The horizontal uh, racks, which really helps with the organization. And then coming back over to the mixer, you can see that I have the horns all bust out to horn bus this guy can move over here and for the strings same so actually this is for the string runs that occur during the transition mm -hmm. and so there are some that are an octave higher an octave lower than others and stack those on top of each other and then they're getting a little pan action as well and just really uh, gives it a nice full sound and so I grouped those together. And so coming back over here to the sequencer, you can see it's, it's pretty long as well. And I love blocks. It just helps to keep everything organized. And you've got a lot of tracks there. And it looks, it looks right. like um, you've got the block sections that you arranged in the block itself. And then you put uh, in the song mode, you also put uh, other things right. on, on top, additional performances on top. Right, yeah, because for the second verse, um, I introduced, you know, some extra strings, and we can just play a bit of that right now gotcha. coming out of the chorus. So, you know, just adding that, it wasn't going to be in every verse. Um, but, you know, just the fact, and also uh, dropping out the drums here um, that, we, that we heard. Just the ability to draw over um, those drums, I, I love that as well. Because you don't have to automate it. 
right. you know, just uh, it's just as simple as, you know, dragging this as long as I want and I have no drums. Right. Oh, great. That's a great tip. Yeah. 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 So um, back here at the intro. So I have just a basic 808 that um, the pitch is falling. And you can you can you can feel it more than you can hear it, which is what I love to do with 808s. Um, a nice sub kick drum. Exactly, sound there, yeah. exactly. And I'll solo out some of this stuff. So just real basic drums that programmed in Kong. Uh, let's take a look at that. And this is actually a kit from Factory Sound Bank. Did you use uh, Redrum to uh, write the pattern for this as well? Like um, you were showing us before the template? You know what? No, I don't think I did. Yeah, because we'd see the information here. And so there wasn't anything going on in Redrum uh, for this. So this was just all programmed. You just dropped the beat right into the sequence of tracks. Right, yeah, so just programmed it using my controller. And so, coming out of that. And then the bass guitar is from the electric bass refill. And so if we were to solo this out. And so of course, these are the old Line 6 amps, um, which now we have the great soft tube. And so if we wanted to get an idea how those sound, we can just easily swap this out. Let me go ahead and loop. Right, the new soft tube uh, bass and guitar amps that uh, are coming with Reason 8. Exactly. Along with its new browser. And so. Yeah, they sound really warm. Right. Go over to the effects. Uh, we can drag. Maybe we can just drag a patch on. Soft to the bass sound. Right. right. So instead of even swapping out the instrument, that's great. Right. That is so cool. Yeah, no, I love it. And these bass patches that Soft to um, provided are just really great sound, as you can hear. Right yeah, there, a really distinctive, uh, distinctive difference in the sound. Right, it's much, much warmer, not so, uh, not so digital. Right, and scroll through some of these, and there's already great samples in the Reason Electric Bass refill. Right. So right. you know, you put a great amp simulation on top right. of that. Yeah, that that's just killer combination. Yeah. Right. Sweet. So if I bring this back in the context of the song. I think that sounds cool. We can just leave that in there. I like it. Um, and so let's take a look at the guitars and get an idea for how A-list is working. Mm -hmm. uh, so one thing I love about A-list is it comes with a bunch of different styles already, which range from a standard set of phrases and then specialized phrases for the certain style type. But you can also create your own phrases by use of the matrix. Oh, really? So, and it's really like rolling the dice the way I like to do it because I'll randomize a pattern in matrix and then connect it uh, to the electric guitars re. And, you know, you, you just see what you get. So this was really my first time I randomized it. And let's, let's solo this. So this is for the hook, the guitar in the, that's playing in the chorus. And I actually used a patch from the factory sound bank, which has a compressor and uh, Scream 4. So it was just a combinator effect patch that you loaded right in there. Right, right. right. So, and you know, this is good stuff. And it, you know, in addition to the soft tube uh, yeah. stuff that's out there. So if we listen back to this. So you can see the matrix pattern sequencer running here. And if I flip this around, uh, the note CV is going to the note CV input and the gate to the gate. And 
you know, I'm gonna just randomize this again so you can hear. So the first, when I randomized it the first time, I just liked the groove it was given. So essentially what it's doing is taking collections of different phrases and it makes its own new phrase uh -huh. from that. So it just sounded cool and I just rolled with it. Fantastic. Um, yeah, so, but I'm doing something different on this funky rhythm guitar, which I believe is in the verse. So I'll go ahead and play that. And being a guitarist myself, I even, never even thought of hooking up the Matrix to, right. to control the A-list guitar, and that's... Yeah, yeah, no, it's a, awesome. It's kind of a, a neat melding of both worlds. Exactly, exactly. So if we just take a listen to this guy soloed. So essentially what happens is the information that's here in this track is following, I wanna say this is following the chord progression. So each of those notes is triggering uh, performance in the A-list guitar. Right, let's see. Let me just get my facts. And then you know, just the length of the note is determining how long that riff is being played. Right, so what's happening is this top lane is for the chord progression. Mm -hmm. And then this lane here, which is a different set of keys on the keyboard, because everything C4, let me make sure this is all right, will trigger let me see where this cutoff is. I'm playing this song. So you can see the chord changing here, and then the phrase is changing according to the second lane. Mm -hmm. So gotcha. it's a mix between standard phrases, which you'll find um, in every uh, style, and then with certain styles, they have their own set of specialized phrases which you can see reflected in the this in the straight uh, numerical numbers so number eight and number one are for this kind of funky style mm -hmm. so what i did was i automated as well the style they also have them uh, an octave higher so i have kind of funky and then kind of funky high um, and that automation is shown here uh, because there was a certain chord that i wanted but i wanted uh, notes in an upper register. So when it came around to that chord, still the same chord, I just automated it to trigger the the, the other style. Um, right, and we, right. You can see the list of all the different right. styles that they have, um, and it's pretty vast from right, reggae. That's a lot of stuff. And, yeah. And so we can go ahead and just change one of these just to get an idea for what they sound it's like. Pretty much got the bases covered. Right. So, a lot of options, you know, for writing. Um, and this is doubled. Well, the doubling is off now, but when it comes around to the chorus, uh, I've automated it to where it enables the doubling and just mm -hmm. gives it, you know, that. Like a chorus feel? Exactly. Yeah. Chorus uh, effect feel. Exactly. So, uh, I, I love this read. Like I said, it's going to be in a lot of my tracks, you know. I mean, it sounds, it sounds that just that good. I mean, lots of times, like you're doing with vocals where you do a demo and then right. you have somebody else come in and re-perform it so right. you can record it. You're just using it as a songwriting tool, but this sounds that good. Right. That, right. You know. And they're actual phrases, you know, yeah. so I think that helps. Um, but I've layered this with another, um, uh, with another Rex loop. Uh, so, and this is for the pre-chorus part, um, right before the chorus. And, mm -hmm. and so it just gives a, another great, and when you bring it in with everything else. So that's 
that's just kind of showing the power of you know can you show us the the refills that you're using i mean you got so many in, on top yeah, of the a-list sounds and the miroslav right where was you could go to the self-contained settings right and i believe Electromechanical, which I mm -hmm. use for the roads. Uh, the Montro 1973 patch on the roads is my favorite road sound. And let's see, some horn stuff from Fat Loud demo refill. I'm trying to see where the other guitar loop came from. Uh, loop Masters has a disco demo refill that I had laying around. It just had this perfect guitar loop that I added in there, and so. Uh, that's where that came from. And so now I'll take a look at the horns, which are in the chorus. If we zoom back up here, I'll solo out this, this bus. So what's playing those horns? Is that so it's a mixture of Rex loops and NNXT stuff that I played in. Okay. So I could do sir. Uh, so you're mixing some, of the, mixing some of the phrases of the Rex loops? Right. With some of the gold lines from the NNXT? Exactly. So this is stuff from the NNXT. So I love the trumpet falls mm -hmm. that are available. Um, I think those are in the orchestra sound bank. Um, and then I had some trombone stuff that I played in in different articulations. And then I mixed that in with... And so that's just, you know, one stab that I'm using from this Rex file. And if we take a look at this particular Rex... Let's see. I think I probably... So yeah, it's just showing us one stab. And this next one. And I have them panned as well, so, so the high one is on one end and on the other one, it's switching sides. Take some of this other stuff out. I'll take out the NXT stuff. So then that's just the Rex loop we're listening to now? Right, and this is just one Rex loop that we're listening to. You can see the way that I've chopped it up here. Uh -huh. And on different lanes. Just, just grabbing the parts of the phrase that you want to keep. Exactly. And then when you bring it all together. And then bring it back into the context. Whether I'm taking out certain slices and you know panning them mixing them with ones from different libraries right. so that's always a lot you're, of fun. you're not using the loop verbatim right and sometimes I will depending uh, yeah. but for this the occasion just called for me really pulling stuff out of everywhere well it sounds amazing I mean the the, the uh, horn lines that you came up with oh thanks uh, thanks that, that you uh, and, and that's from you know you playing it and you using a Rex loop and right. just those different resources and putting them together and, right. and arranging them in such a way that they make good solid musical sense. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, those are the horns and um, in terms of the the string run, I can give you an idea for uh, what that sounded like. So it's it's really short here because on the, what I did was I brought in another Rex file, um, which is from Disco School. So when I combine it with this one, it finishes the phrase. Mm -hmm. So obviously they, they have a, a, a different ambience to them, right. but in the context of the song, it just, it just fits. So that, um, 
That just shows you, you know, just so many of the different ways you can piece that stuff together. Wow, that was some amazing stuff, Hilton. Uh, thank you. Thanks thank you. so much for being here and sharing your templates and how you're using Reason 8 and, uh, and your really cool production work right in the program itself and showing us a session. Are there any final remarks you'd like to make and advice that you would have to give to aspiring music producers? The best advice I would give is to study your craft to the fullest extent. I think uh, Berkeley has great course offerings in terms of reason and songwriting, music theory, really e everything that it takes to be a great uh, music producer and songwriter. So that wraps up our chat with Hilton Deuce Wright and Reason 8. And thanks for being here. Appreciate you guys watching.